Hello everybody, good morning and welcome to the United Stand. This is your latest Manchester United transfer news. Lots to get into as usual. Uh, we have got developments on De Jong. I mean, I don't know why people are leading on De Jong. Have you got nothing else to do? You know, there's plenty of other bits of information you can go and get and everyone's leading on De Jong. We're not going to lead on De Jong. We're going to be leading on Ten Hag's Ajax transfer plea and two big transfer developments for you this morning that don't involve De Jong and don't involve Ericsson because you know what on this community we go out and try and find new news and not regurgitate the same old shit for clicks so apologies first of all that I appreciate that there are non-United fans who follow me on Twitter obviously very ahead of the game with Sterling and Nunez and Rafina, and I think some people think I'm going to talk about non-United news little bit to do with Arsenal but it's very much United news this morning um, OK, so let's fly straight into it. First thing I want to say is that um, two big developments here. Very well, I would say, yeah, very good information on both. First bit of information relates to the thumbnail, which is Ajax plea. It does, in, it does impact on Arsenal a little bit, but it's mainly Manchester United news. So Manchester United will sign... Uh, so Manchester United will sign Frankie de Jong. We know. We know they want Ericsson. We know. OK, but... We also know that Eric Ten Hag really wants Timber and really wants Anthony. Now, Arsenal are pushing very hard for Lissandro Martinez. They are bidding and they are trying to get that deal done. The information coming from Ajax is very good. There's no reason to disagree with a Mike Furway or someone like that. Ajax, Arsenal, Lissandro Martinez. Ajax want big money and they don't want to sell any other players. Manchester United and Eric Ten Hag want Anthony and Timber. Now, whether they're going to get both of those, probably far-fetched. But right now, Manchester United are in talks with Ajax, not really for bids. They're really trying to play on the relationships, the, the dynamics of Edwin van der Sar being a former United player, the dynamic of the respect between Manchester United and Ajax, and the major dynamic that Eric Ten Hag did a lot of good for Ajax over the last few years. They're playing on that. They're almost pleading on that and saying, please, don't be selling Arsenal Lissandra Martinez and then closing your shop. If you're going to give Arsenal Lissandra Martinez then please, please let us have a, have a couple of players ourselves. And this is what's going on with Manchester United at the moment. They are not bidding on Ajax players. They are negotiating with Ajax to say, we will bid. It will be in a couple of weeks' time. Please take notice of this relationship that we have. And please take notice of the fact of what Eric Ten Hag has done at this club for you. And understand that Anthony certainly wants to come. We want to do a deal, but we've got to get De Jong done first. So Manchester United effectively are in talks with Ajax. We're not close to signing any of their players, but we are desperately trying to get Ajax to maintain this relationship that we have with them. And I mean, I suppose show a bit of patience. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see because Arsenal are basically going, there's £35 million for Lissandra Martinez. No, they'll probably go back 40 Will they keep saying no? And if they say yes, will Ajax then say we're not selling anybody else? So Manchester United are in negotiations with Ajax. We're not close and we're not bidding. We're certainly not bidding on a centre-back at the moment because we need to get midfielder and earn uh, De Jong and Anthony done first. But we are deep in conversation with Ajax and a lot of it is about maintaining that relationship and almost, as I say, pleading with them to say, look, give us a little bit of time. We do want to do these deals. But for Ajax, you can understand if they just go no because... They've sold half their team. Fabrizio mentioned yesterday, Taglifico, the left back, one year left on his contract. They'll probably let him go. The goalkeeper's gone. The right back's gone. Gravenberg's gone. Haller's gone. Um, who else has gone? Lissandro Martinez is probably going to go. So they don't want to sell any more players, but Manchester United really are deep in conversations with Ajax, trying to maintain a relationship to do some business. We're an utter joke, says Saints. I mean, whether we're an utter joke or, joke or not, I can only bring you the news on that. And, and I suppose that news is quite concerning in the sense, but it's consistent with what Manchester United have tried to do this summer, which is get De Jong in and then go and do other business. And look, I, 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 the one thing I will say is I don't know what the relationship with Ajax and Ten Hag is. You'd have to speak to a Dutch expert on that. I don't know whether Ajax would go willingly... Yeah, OK, we, we will do that. Because Man United are basically saying to Ajax, we are going to pay you for these players. We're just not in a position to do it at the moment because we've got to get De Jong done first. Now, Ajax could be stubborn or they could be, look, at the end of the day, you did, you know, Ten Hag did a lot of good work for us. We want to maintain the relationship. You're going to give us fair price. Let's do the business. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens because Arsenal are really pushing on Lissandra Martinez. 
and like really pushing hard and they will they will go in with another fee as well so interesting to see what happens with that we need De Jong or we're not even going to get conference league this season says Naza so the second bit of information for you um and if you didn't like the last one which I mean look I don't I don't mind the last update it's you know I suppose it's logical in a sense the second update I've been trying to get this for a long time got it last night Manchester United second midfielder no plan to buy a second midfielder. So breaking news on that one. Manchester United have got no plan to buy a second midfielder. The plan is to get De Jong, get Anthony, get a centre-back and then maybe a full-back. And obviously Ericsson. That would be their five signings. There is no plan to go and get a Kante or a Sangari or Ruben Neves or anything like that. No plan for Manchester United to do that. They don't have the, bu the budget to do it and it's not been prioritised. So whether you like that or you don't like that, the logic behind this, if you get De Jong, you've got McTominay, you've got Fred, you've got Garner, you've got um, Van der Beek. That's five. You've also then got Bruno... So, and maybe Ericsson, seven, who can play in the midfield area. Manchester United have got no plan to go and get the defensive-minded midfielder or anything like that. It's not on the plan at this moment. Now, obviously, things can change. If, the, if we don't get the players from Ajax, maybe you adjust your price. Maybe you adjust your transfer window. Remember, Darwin Nunez was part of plan A for Manchester United. Liverpool took him. We're now not looking for a forward. Even Samuel Lucker said it yesterday. And to... Anthony is now seen as a forward that's dynamic. That means they don't have to go for an out-and-out striker. It's interesting because we always wanted Anthony and Darwin Nunez. But with no Darwin Nunez, Manchester United don't feel that there's a striker available. And this is the fluidity of a Manchester United transfer window when you don't have infinite, um, infinite budgets at the end of the day. Um, the reality is that, um, you know... Breaking on Sky Sports News now. Okay, let's have a quick look. Somebody just said. I mean, I've probably just been scammed here, but let's have a look. Uh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Arsenal awaiting a response from Ajax after submitting a second offer for Lissandra Martinez. Manchester United have asked to be kept informed of developments over Martinez while they prepare an offer as they focus on securing De Jong. Well, that's probably uh, well briefed. That's from uh, Charlie Watts, who's Arsenal. I mean, he's obviously had similar information to what I've had this morning. Um, that's very good. I can't see anything breaking about Ericsson. I don't know whether I'm being scammed a little bit here. You know, thank you very much for doing that and uh, breaking my concentration. But uh, no, I can't see anything there about that. But uh, yeah, as I said, hi, Mark. Uh, it's breaking on slow sports news. Well, I'm going to go with what I've got here because... Uh, Sky Sports News ain't all that anyway. Just a suggestion, why don't they loan Palestri and Ahmad to Ajax to help with oiling the cogs, Ryan? I mean, th 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 these sort of things can be part of the conversation, but I want to go back to what I know is breaking news and what I know is relevant news. And what I know is breaking news and what I know is relevant news is that Manchester United are not looking for a second midfielder after Frankie de Jong. Now, I know that's going to be really disappointing to some people, but that is the noise coming out of Manchester United, that they almost want to um, um, manage expectations. I keep seeing, you know, I agree. I agree. Sangari, uh, plenty of others. Declan Rice was a player that Man United wanted, but they got priced out of. But I think whether we like it or not, and I don't like the fact that we're not going for another midfielder because Frankie de Jong is not a defensive-minded midfielder. I don't care what anybody said. He's not a defensive-minded midfielder. He can play that role, but he's not a breaker-up of the play. That's what we need. Somebody like a Fabinho or a, or a Kante or someone like that. We need that type of player because we just don't have that profile of player at Manchester United. We do need that type of player, but we've already seen this with United. We want Declan Rice. We can't get him, so we won't go for somebody else who's like Declan Rice. We can't get do what Darwin Nunez, so we won't go for a striker. United have been behaving like this quite quite a lot recently, where they go, they want a player, and they don't seem to have a plan B or C that they that they, that they lined up. So Manchester United's transfer window at the moment looks very much like being De Jong, potentially Ericsson or not. I don't know what's happening with that. De Jong. Ericsson, Anthony, a centre-back, maybe a full-back. And that would be their transfer window. There is no plan to go for a defensive-minded midfielder. And that is not just on the club. That is on Ten Hag as well. And what we've got to remember is we can't, 
we, we were never going to be able to solve every problem in one summer. I think if you gave Eric Ten Hag an unlimited budget, he'd get a right back, a left back, a centre back, two midfielders, a right winger, a striker, maybe a goalkeeper. You know, there's loads of things he'd do. He doesn't have that budget. But I am surprised that we haven't prioritised um, a, a defensive minded midfielder and, and we're not going to. As of today, we're not going to. As of the last few weeks, it's not on the priority list. Mike, I know it's joked about, but Donny is basically like a new midfielder, so I'm not upset we're not buying another means we can buy in other areas, says Adam. Well, that is the hope, Adam, but, you know, as much as I like Donny, he ain't Kante, he ain't Fabinho, he ain't Rodri, he ain't that sort of midfielder, and we don't have someone like that. I don't get this board. If we want Ajax players, get bid in now and stop messing about, says Dazu. Mark, came here for positive news, but no positive news as such. Not your fault. The club is a shambles, says Jay. Well, I can give you some positive news, Jay. I just didn't want to dwell on the most boring story of the summer transfer window, but I can give you that. Manchester United will pay close to 80 million. So, almost, you know, Jay moans and I give him a bit of positivity. Manchester United will pay close to 80 million euros for fee for Frankie de Jong. Negotiations for bonuses and the uh, definitive agreement is being cleared up so that de Jong can end up at Old Trafford this summer. So that's coming in from Sport, who are very close to Barcelona via Sport Witness. Um, it's interesting on the fee, isn't it? What was, I, what was it I said last Wednesday? Samuel Looker said it on Thursday as well, to be fair. I said it on Wednesday. 75 million euros plus 10 in add-ons was what I was told last Wednesday. Yesterday, people were talking about 65 million euros and things like that. Let's see. I'm very interested to see what happens with this fee because uh, we just need to get it done at the end of the day. Mark, uh, we've done that one as well. We have no backup plan because we have no scouting and Murta has no pedigree. Ten Hag is supposed to come up with his own targets only at United, says Julian. Welcome to the Members Club, Liam Dunn. Hi, Mark. Maybe Ten Hag can turn around the forms of some of our Deadwood players, says Tony. Uh, Tony, I appreciate your positivity, but I absolutely do not want to hear it. I don't want... I, I've been listening to this shit for nine years. Like, it, it, no value in the market. Uh, potential, I really do not want to hear... Potential in this squad, we finished second a year ago, ever again. Like, I know football, you know football, and I know some of those players are shit. Like, I can't, I'm, I'm tired of using this uh, this example, but Pep Guardiola spends 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 million pounds on players. Why would he buy Erling Haaland and Jack Grealish and Bernardo Silva and Kevin De Bruyne for all the money he spent over the years. Why would he keep spending a lot of money on players, Pep Guardiola, when he's the best coach in the world? Why not just go to Leighton Orient or Stoke and buy some 20-year-old that he can turn into Messi? Because you can't do that. And yet some of our fans still think you can turn shit players into good players because you've got a good coach. You can make them play the game a bit better, but their general ability... like. Give me a crap United player that you think, you know, Wambasaka. Like, I like Wambasaka, but he's limited, isn't he? There is no way Pep Guardiola or Jurgen Klopp could turn Wambasaka into Cancelo or Trent, or anywhere near it. Because Trent and Cancelo are talented players that, no matter what, would be talented players. Some of our fans think because we've got Ten Hag, people like Harry Maguire, Scott McTominay, Bruno Fernandes, Marcus Rashford, players that we know their style of play we're suddenly going to turn them into a Xavi or, or, or a prime Busquets or a prime Poyol or a prime Neymar or something like that we're not going to do that they will improve but they're not going to walk into a like Brentford game or Brighton game in a, in a United kit like a completely different player I worry about Bruno and I worry about Rashford because I look at Eriksen and De Jong and I see players that Ten Hag wants that fit the way he wants to play. He wants to pay, play high possession stat football, which means patience on the ball. Bruno and Rashford can't wait to get rid of the ball, whether it's a shot, a, a pass or something like that. So look, all the coaching in the world, he's basically got to change the mindset of some of these players. The talent of Rashford and Bruno is undoubted in my opinion. It's no doubt that last season they were dreadful. But I don't think you can take Bruno and Rashford and turn them into patient build-up players. That's that's not what... They were never that. They were never that. When they were good, they were never that. So we've got to sort of understand that you've got to give Ten Hag the players that fit his system. And not every player that we're hoping is going to turn into that type of player is going to be that. But... Um, Liam, thank you very much. So, yeah, look, um, let me just bring it back to what I was saying. The conversations that we're having with Ajax, 
are very much what Charlie Watts has said there. Um, Arsenal bidding for Lissandro Martinez aggressively. Arsenal have been very good in the transfer window this summer so far. They want Lissandro Martinez. They're not going to go anywhere. They're actively today, yesterday and tomorrow bidding on Lissandro Martinez. Manchester United are not actively bidding on any Ajax player. We are basically saying to Ajax, remember Eric Ten Hag was your manager? Be nice to us and wait. And that is a big question to ask because why would they wait if Arsenal offer more for Martinez than we're going to offer for Timber? So I think we're in a dangerous position getting a centre-back out of Ajax. But maybe Ten Hag can sort something out with Anthony because he does want to come. Um, as for the second bit of news, Manchester United are not, repeat, not actively looking for a second midfielder. I know there's been a lot of talk in the press about United prioritising the midfield. We are not looking for a second midfielder. It is De Jong, De Jong, De Jong, and that is it. The budget on the midfield is gone after De Jong. We are not looking. Kante, we briefly looked at a month ago. That was backed away from. Neves, never really seriously in for, but was felt to be the backup option to De Jong. Sangari and any other midfielder, Tillemans or what, we're not looking for it. The reason we're not looking for it, and you might not like it, is because we've got McTominay, we've got Fred, we've got Donny, we've got Garner. That's four midfielders. You bring De Jong in, that's five. You've still got Bruno, that's six. We're not looking for a second midfielder. Um, and it may, it may come back to bite us next season because ultimately I think you don't need McTominay and Fred in a Manchester United squad. One of those players should be moved on. The fact that neither of them are being moved on is preventing us going for another midfielder because I'll tell you this for a fact as well, Eric Ten Hag has sat down with John Murta and the football people at United and they've analysed that squad and they've and, and literally they've had to go, you can't buy another fullback until you get rid of a Wambasaka or a Tellez. You can't buy another midfielder when you've got Fred McTominay, Donny Garner. You've got to get rid of one of them. And ultimately, at this moment in time, all of those players are going on tour and all of those players are going to be given a chance. Now, in a month's time, maybe Eric goes, I can't work with this midfield. I need to get a midfielder in. Let's sell one of them. But as of now, it's not a priority. It's frustrating. It's frustrating because many Manchester United fans, and we've been here a long, longer than Eric Ten Hag, have looked at that midfield for a number of years and said we're crying out for a certain profile of midfielder. We didn't get it last year. We didn't get it the year before. We're not going to get it this year. It's De Jong. Um, and I think we needed two midfielders, didn't we? Dylan, welcome to Members Club. Thank you very much. Kevin, who is a member, says it leads back to the club being arrogant. You can't ask a club to wait while you prioritise another deal when they have a serious bidder, says Kevin. You know what, Kevin? It comes back to the same old thing. Why are we making Ajax wait? Why can we not bid for Martinez or Timber whilst also bidding for De Jong? Is it because we can't do more than one deal at a time or is it because we've got a limited budget? And I think it's because we've got a limited budget and I'm going to I'm going to be really interested on August the 31st to add up our net spend because I tell you what, if our net spend is under £120 million, then regardless of whether we're top of the league at that point on September the 1st, there has to be serious, serious questions. And there should be serious questions asked to the Glazers anyway. But if you're giving a new manager less than 120 million quid, when Arsenal are hitting over 150 and Chelsea are going to do the same and Man City are going to do the same and Spurs are going to do the same, I mean, and we've got the revenues we've got, no. Nah. No. Last season, Bruno worse than Pereira and Rashford play like toddler who can't walk. Why people think they can become world beaters, just release them, says Jay. No second midfielder terrifies me, says James Cave. Which of the current United squad do you see being those that can thrive and improve in Ten Hag's system? I'll come back to that, James, because it was a topic I wanted to talk about, but I do just want to go through some of the uh, news as well. Obviously, I've given you two bits of news there. I just want to go through some other bits for you. Uh, some of it is coming in from sport. Let's just have a look. With De Jong giving his approval, the deal can advance faster from now on. Man United are hoping to have the player for their pre-season tour. Frankie sees ready for a change of scenery and heading to Manchester United. Uh, Frankie has uh, accepted to leave Barcelona if there is an agreement that satisfies all parties. His stance is valued as positive, so it could be considered the agreement may be close. As I said before, Manchester United will pay 80 million fee for Frank De Jong. This is coming from Sport. Uh, and then the Daily Mail are saying that Manchester United are inching towards a conclusion in their protracted pursuit of Frankie De Jong from Barcelona and hope to have the transfer completed this week. Um, and then finally, just if you're interested, Manchester United have ended their pursuit of Watford goalkeeper Daniel Backman as they were unwilling to pay what the championship side wanted, which I think actually will please quite a lot of people because, I mean, at the end of the day, why are we 
loaning out a backup keeper to buy a backup keeper, but, you know, that is a little bit weird. Um, just on Frankie de Jong, um, I think that in relation to Frankie de Jong, um, uh, you know, there's nothing really to add on Frankie de Jong. Like, I, I think everybody knows it's going to happen this week. I pers purposely haven't really led on Frankie de Jong today because there's nothing to add. I've, I've heard people saying things like Manchester United... Um, Manchester United are, uh, you know, working on personal terms. They they were sorted at the weekends. They were sorted out late last week. So this is just about. Look, I, I'm not convinced about negotiating the fee. I'm not, not not convinced about negotiating personal terms. Um, this deal is always about Barcelona. I guarantee this deal will be announced when Barcelona want it to be announced. And at the moment, Barcelona haven't signed anybody. So I don't necessarily think today's going to be the day with Frankie De Jong. But um, I don't think anybody knows when the, when the day is going to be. Um, uh, just I'm just looking here. Man United players all in by 9am this morning in a throwback to the Ferguson days. Look, I, again, look, I, I know everybody's very excited about Manchester United and Ten Hag training the team. And look, we've got to back Eric Ten Hag. I 100% believe, believe in that. Um, you know I wanted this manager and I'm, I'm very excited about it. But... I'm not going to get excited about shower ship players last year who basically downed tools for the fans and couldn't even be asked to run around turning up for a couple of days at nine o'clock. Like, these players are not going to have a problem putting their smile on their face and running around hard in pre-season. It's when the season starts and they're on the bench. That's when these players... Re I am not taking any notice of any United player turning up on time, smiling, looking good in training doing well in pre-season. I'm not taking any notice of it at all. And do you want to know why I'm not going to take any any notice about it? Because that's not where it went wrong last season either. Last season, pre-season under Solskjaer, they were all smiling. It's when they're dropped. That's when these players start to stab the manager in the back. So I'm encouraged and excited about the Eric Ten Hag era. I'm not encouraged and excited by these players because they've let us down. And I, and, and I say that collectively because they've all let us down in their own way bar one or two um I'm, i want to see some new players that's what i want to see i want to see some new players because you can't just put a new manager in charge of that lot that we need some new players to come into united and it needs to happen sooner rather than later um and yeah I, i'm very realistic and i'm very eyes open to what united are doing um look at sky sports they are saying the fee for de young i'm not looking at like 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 sky sports mark turner because um they are not very good when it comes to manchester united they are not very good when it comes to transfers um and i don't believe what they've got to say so i'm not going to look at sky sports news there's certain people i will go and have a look at i'm not going to go and look at sky sports news they've not had their finger on the pulse for anything for about four years um, in fact, they should probably check their own. Mark, thoughts on Serge Nabry as an option for the wing position? He's had a superb few years at Bayern and one year left on his contract. Um, apparently, I think Liverpool might be looking at him, to be fair. Um, not winning anything potentially over the last years has impacted our position in the transfer market, even so that we are now in the same league as Brentford. Um, I can't believe how many people are saying check Sky Sports. You need to leave this channel. If you think that Manchester United... I mean, Edward Walters says that Sky Sports are saying that Frankie de Jong is close to an agreement for £65 million plus performance add-ons. I mean, that's literally the story that we've just put out from sport. It's regurgitated. Look, if you want to watch slow sports news for your news, you know where it is. It's on Sky. It's on Virgin. Go and watch it. Like, I don't take my news from Sky because they're not, they're not very quick. They're slow. That, we've already given you that news. Go and watch it. If you, if you think that's where you're going to get your good information, go and watch it. Don't waste my time telling me to go and watch Sky Sports News. When they want to become credible, I'll give them a shout out. But they're so bloody slow. Morning, Mark. Would you take Samuel Umtiti from Barcelona as a centre-back? Mmm, Titi. No. Uh, Mark, United have completed the signing of... No, we haven't. Uh, Jack, and it's a bit racist what you've said there. So I'm not going to read that out. Um... Well said, Mark. Thank you very much to the Golf Diaries. No, I'm just very, 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 very insistent that on a news show, which we do every day, you build up a knowledge of who's credible and who's not. And I'm not bloody interrupting a show because of Sky Sports. Like, I, I've never... I haven't done that for three years. Three years ago, they were really good on wan and Dan James and Harry Maguire. I think Sky Sports has fell off. I really do. I do. I think it's fell off big time. And, you know, I think there are other outlets that I take notice of. Would you take Ndidi for a swap 
uh, plus cash, says Connor. Um, well, I, th I think you're just, um, I think you're just throwing up news at the moment. That's uh, that, uh, not news. I think you're just throwing up an opinion that doesn't really uh, make any uh, sense as things stand. One thing I would say, very interestingly, because I have had a lot of information, which has been proved right about other clubs this summer. So I was told about Sterling to Chelsea way before anybody else, and people were like, "What are you on about?" And now it's happening. I was told about Nunez to Liverpool on the Champions League eve when everyone thought he was coming to United. Proven right. I was told about Rafina to Arsenal before anybody else. And I think I'll get proven right on that. Long lay to Spurs. I haven't been told. I didn't break this story. I haven't broken any story, really, to be honest. But I mean, I have had information soon. But long lay to Spurs is quite interesting. That's gathering some pace because long lay to Spurs is gathering some pace but it's interesting because remember we spoke to uh, for yesterday on the show to Fabrizio Romano Pau Torres is still very much an option and Pau Torres has always been an option for Manchester United now if Pau Torres is not going to Spurs Mark look Chelsea have gone a bit quiet on him but I, I, I think I think at least there's still an option there with Pau Torres we've got to buy a centre-back we've got to buy a centre-back haven't we that's 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 without doubt that that has to be that has to happen this summer transfer window um a lot of people saying when do you think that we will sign um when do you think we'll sign frankie de Jong? um well look i've just had a look at this now okay so look don't ever say i don't check other things so people were saying can you check sky mark breaking news i can't believe you watch the United Stand and you're asking me to check this. Like, what do you do? Do you listen like this? Like, you know what the breaking news story is from Sky? Get ready for this one. You know, you might fall off your chair with this stunningly breaking news. Manchester United and Barcelona have, have, have a broad agreement on the fee for Frankie de Jong, believed to be 65 million plus performances related add-ons. Oh my God! Slow sports news, yellow tie, country not cornflakes, Audi driver. I've got this breaking news from a carrier pigeon. Like, I can't believe you're asking me to check that. I'm sorry. I think as a community and as a fan base, we can find the information out better than that. That is a joke. Manchester United have a broad agreement. Well, a broad agreement means it could be somewhere in this figure. On the fee for Frankie de Jong, believed to be 65 million plus performance related add-ons. Fabrizio Romano on this show yesterday said 65 million euros. Like, he literally said that on the show yesterday. And he wasn't the only person who said that. He said 65 million euros and then they've got to discuss whether there's any add-ons. And that's breaking news a day later and some of you prats are telling me to bring it into the news show. We literally had somebody on the show 24 hours ago telling us United's next bid is going to be 65 million euros. We'll see whether it includes add-ons. Sky the next morning say, breaking news. Man United are going to offer something around 65 million euros. It's not breaking news. That is not breaking news. It was literally said yesterday by at least two other outlets. So come on. Well, I don't know what you do. Do you wake? Do you go to bed at night and then wake up with a? You know, are you R two D two? No, not R two D two. C three P O. Do you go to bed at night and press a reset button and then wake up and forget everything you've learned? It's like that's not. Look, maybe the fee is going to be around sixty five million. Maybe it is, boss. I'm still hearing, as I said, and we can put it up on the screen here. But what Sport said, Sport have said from Barcelona. Sport have said that Manchester United will pay close to 80 million fee in euros. Well, that's 15 million more than what Sky is saying. I think the reality is, I was told last Wednesday we were going to offer 75 million euros plus 10 in add-ons. 75 million euros is 64 million pounds. It's still not a bad deal. 65 million euros is about 54 million pounds. That's a bloody good deal. I think we're going to pay around 80 million euros as a package to Barcelona. How that's constructed, whether it's 65 plus 15, whether it's 70 plus 10, whether it's 75 plus 5 or 10, I'm intrigued to know what we pay. I'm not massively concerned as long as we don't pay 100 million euros, but I am interested to see what we're going to pay because we've, we've been working on this deal for two months, but we'll get the player. 
Could Donny and De Jong be two in the midfield and work together there? Both intelligent, smart players and could read the plates as Barry. Look, I'll be absolutely honest with you, Barry, now, and I want to come back to this. Mark, realise all these checks so are so are from the Ollie Henderson tweet. Twitter users derailing you, says MWK. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, yeah, Barry. So could Donny and Frankie De Jong work in a midfield too? Well, remember what I said to you, one of the breaking stories for us this morning was that Manchester United are not looking for a second midfielder. I don't want to give you that news. I don't want that to be the news, but we're not looking for a second midfielder. There's no... United will get De Jong, Anthony, a centre-back, a full-back and Eriksen and that will be their summer. That's what they want to do. They don't want another midfielder. I think it's wrong. I think Ten Hag's wrong on that, to be fair, but I think the club is wrong. They know the club better than Ten Hag. We needed a second midfielder. We need a defensive-minded midfielder. We're not looking for one at the moment. Maybe that will change in the next few weeks, but it's scary that it's not a priority right now. So if we're not going to buy a midfielder, my hope is that we do play Donny and Frankie together as midfield two with either Ericsson or Bruno ahead of them. I don't want to see Fred and Dion. I don't want to see McTominay and Dion. I want to see Donny and Dion as a midfield two. Whether that can work, I don't know. But you can't sit to me. You can't say to me, Donny and Dion won't work. If we're not going to buy a defensive-minded midfielder to play next to Dion, then we've got to use what we've got. And I would much rather try De Jong and Donny or De Jong and Garner because people can say, well, Garner's not going to work, he's not experienced or Donny's not physical enough. And I'm not arguing that. But I've just spent a season watching Fred and McTominay and you can't tell me that Fred and McTominay are better than Donny and Garner. Like, they may prove to be better than them, but they don't deserve to be, to, to be in control of that shirt. So... If we're not going to buy this second midfielder and it's going to be De Jong and another, I would rather try De Jong and, and, and uh, Donny or De Jong and Garner before I try De Jong and McTominay or De Jong and Fred. But I guarantee we'll probably will use them. Um, Mark, you're going to get a heart attack with how much you hate Sky Sports. I don't hate Sky Sports TXN. I, just, I don't hate Sky Sports at all. But I see a lot of you... Like I could mention The Sun and people will go, rubbish, don't mention The Sun. Crap, crap, crap. But then I will say, but Neil Custis has been around Man United for years. And although he's not always right, if he says something as a breaking news story, I always think it's worth taking a look at because I know he's been close to United for years, even though I don't really rate the sun. So look, Sky used to be brilliant. They used to be brilliant, but I think they're just slow now. I think I, I don't think they're very good and I think that's because Sky have made massive mistakes in what they've done with Sky Sports over the last few years. I think they've got rid of good people um, and they've just revamped it all and I think it's become very bland and boring and slow and that's but that's I think Match of the Day became like that as well so you know I used to love Match of the Day it, you know some people might think that you know the United stands become bland and boring and, and don't want to watch it anymore. That's absolutely fine. You're wrong, but no. But no, you know, uh, people's opinions change. And look, maybe next week Sky will break a bre breaking news story. But at the moment, I don't really take them. And, and, that, and that 65 million euros is just complete and utter regurgitation from yesterday. Mark, you said you want the net spend to be 100 million, but for Chelsea last summer they made profit. So if we made profit, then isn't that good business? Uh, Scoo, how are we going to make profit? We haven't got enough players to sell to make profit. Um, uh, I think January transfer window will be better. Oh God, please don't be that person, Spo. I, I mean, I, I, I'm getting tired of people saying that um, Manchester United can get by with what they've got or the January transfer window will be better. I think the January transfer window is very difficult to, to predict because it's straight after the World Cup. People may not do any business um, in relation to that. So... Um, yeah, it's um, it'll be very interesting. But what I would say is, and I really wanted to answer this question. Somebody said this to me today. Ten Hag could easily develop Van der Beek into the sixth role, says Ben. We'll have to wait and see. Remember, he never played in that role under Eric Ten Hag. He played as a more advanced player under Eric Ten Hag. He played in the Bruno role under Eric Ten Hag. But um, I've heard a few people saying this, and I just wanted to sort of give you my opinion on it. So I suppose I would frame it like this. What is success... For, what is success for Eric Ten Hag? Success for Eric Ten Hag for me is in season one, win the Europa League and get in the top four. That is success in season one. 
within three seasons, he's got to be challenging for the title. And that's that's it. I would leave it at that. I don't know what all of you think, get in the comments, but that is what success for Eric Ten Hag is for me. Season one, in the top four, win the Europa League. Season By season three, challenging for the title. That has to be the plan. We are Manchester United and that has to be the plan. Now, what, why he fails, if he fails, is probably going to be because of the Glazers. But we are Manchester United and I'm not going to make excuses for it anymore. Like... This club is a new United. It's it's all about new and getting things right. And there, look, the transfer window is there to be judged. It is. It, it it appalls me that we're not looking for a second midfielder. That we we think that we've got enough in that midfield. I mean, for me, I look at that midfield, and it's why we were crap last year. I don't remember many games that we. I mean, I can't think of any games apart from maybe Leeds and one or two others where we won the midfield battle out of 38 Premier League games. I'd say we lost over 30 midfield battles. That's disgusting. And this is what worries me about United at the moment. When I'm getting told that United aren't looking for any other midfielder apart from Frankie de Jong, I'm going, right, okay, we lost nearly every midfield battle in the Premier League and we're buying Frankie de Jong. That terrifies me. It's like the defence as well. We're not buying a centre-back and yet we had our worst ever defensive centre-back pairing season in my living memory. That midfield is the worst midfield I've seen in my lifetime and we're only buying Frankie de Jong. Like, it worries me. Because there's... Ten Hag is a better coach than Oli by a long way, but it's still about personnel. You know, you can't polish a turd and it worries me, that midfield. Now, of course, Donny might get a fair chance and Garner get a fair chance and they could be like two new signings. But is that a risk? And are they the profile of midfield we need? Could we be seeing Frankie de Jong uh, with uh, de Jong again? Van de Jong again, says TG. I hope so. Mark, if United got Martinez instead of Timber, can he play both centre-back and CDM? Uh, says Andy and Bruno. Yeah, but you can't buy a centre-back to play in the midfield. Like, we, we need a centre-back and a CDM. Like, if you bought Martinez and you start playing him as a CDM, that means we haven't got a centre-back. So, I get what you mean, Andy, and you might be not be wrong, but we need a centre-back and a holding midfielder. We don't need a centre-back who can play CDM and then we lose out on a centre-back. Mark, can we make Ronaldo a CDM, says Rick. And uh, good day, Mark. What positions do you think we will sign, says Shake. Well, I know the positions we're going to sign. No more defensive midfield signings. United have Rolls-Royce Phil Jones in his prime, says Nathan. No way the team finishes top four, even with De Jong, Anthony and Timber, says Jack. The way United are shaping up this summer at the moment, and I was told this, and it's very good information. Um, obviously, we've spoken about the Ajax plea. So the two big stories this morning are that Ajax, Manchester United are basically begging Ajax to not close the shop and keep it open and we're using that relationship with Ten Hag to you know just wait for us to get De Jong and then we'll be over to them to do some business whether Ajax will wait or not we'll see the second story is that as of now Man United have not been looking for a second midfielder it's not a priority Man United's priority as of now today is De Jong Anthony a centre-back a full-back and obviously Ericsson. That's the five signings if we do them. So De Jong, midfielder, Anthony, attacker, centre-back, a full-back and Ericsson. That's our summer. That's what the priorities are. If Eric Ten Hag gets what he wants, that's what he gets. So we don't get two full-backs. We don't get an out-and-out -out striker. We don't get a defensive-minded midfielder. We get De Jong, Anthony, centre-back, full-back, Ericsson. And remember, that's if he gets everything he wants. We might not get Ericsson and we might not get a fullback. So we might just get three. We'll see. How did Donny and Frankie play at Ajax as Ramo? Predominantly in their successful season, which was the one where they got to the Champions League semi-final, De Jong played in a midfield too, with Donny almost becoming a false nine at times because that was the year where they played Tadic as the false nine and Donny ran a lot, uh, past him a lot as the number 10. So it is worth looking at, but I don't, I don't see that's where he's going to use Donny, to be fair. Um, Mark, who do you think needs to have a huge season this season and who do you think will not have a good season, says TXN. I can't predict that at the moment, but um, Bruno, Rashford, Mar uh, not Martial because he might not stay. Bruno, Rashford, Maguire, Sancho, Fred, Shaw, Delo, Varane, Donny. 
you know, there's probably 10 first teamers that need to have big seasons. I think the only two that probably get away with it are De Gea and Ronaldo because what they did last year and you would expect them to have a good season next season as well. Uh, Bruno will improve. He's pissed off with his teammates last year and lost his focus to Stuart. Look, I think Bruno is probably the best example out of anybody. And, you know, we've seen this morning that the players are turning up at nine o'clock to train and they've got a smile on their face. But what does that mean? Ooh, they've turned up early in the training and they're smiling. What does it mean? It doesn't mean anything. This season will be judged in October when we've played nine or ten games, we've played a few Europa League games, and people understand whether they're part of his plans or not. Everybody's got a smile on their face in pre-season. Everybody thinks they've got a chance. By the end of August, when he's picking his 11 and you're on the bench, that's when people start to go, well, I'm not happy. Imagine if Bruno is benched because we get Ericsson and he's not getting in the team. Imagine what Bruno's thinking in September. Do you think he's turning up to training with a smile on his face? This is what people don't think about because they fall into the trap of positivity. Like, we can't make everybody happy. Bruno is interesting because I like Bruno. But the way Bruno plays football, and Ricky's right, I, I like the way he plays football when he's playing well, but Bruno is 100 miles an hour. Gets the ball, wants to play a killer pass. That's why his pass completion rate is not as good as somebody like an Ericsson or a De Jong because he, he wants to play a pass. And when he plays that pass quick and it works, you go, he's a genius. Like Remember that pass he played in the Champions League to Ronaldo with the outside of his foot last year? Pure genius. The way Ten Hag wants to play football is he doesn't want his number 10 or his attacking midfielders to get the ball and just shoot or play a pass in the first two seconds. He wants his number 10 to rotate and keep the ball in possession and probe. Now, Bruno's going to have to change his game completely to do that. Will he be able to change his game completely? Well, that's the test of a good footballer. Can he be developed? I think he can, but we'll have, we'll have to see a very different Bruno. And Rashford. Rashford's another one. Rashford, head down, get a shot off, run out, run at people. Doesn't normally get his head up and play a good cross. Doesn't normally pass it and move. Doesn't normally play a simple pass and want to be part of the build-up. Again, it's another player that's massively got to change his game. Um, and there's a few like that. So it's going to be very interesting. Donny would have set his alarm for 7am this morning. He'd be bouncing, says Joseph. And these players have only learnt to express themselves. They expressed individual fear, anxiety and lack of confidence. Success this season will be getting the team well drilled as a unit, says Jadeep. If these players... The, the, the biggest thing I would say about uh, the way Eric Ten Hag trains people is that what these if these players understand that they're a cog in a machine and everybody's working for the greater good, their job will become easier. They need to let go of their individualism and realise they're part of a team. Because the way Man City play, the way Liverpool play, the way Ajax play, it's team. You're only as good as your weakest player. If somebody doesn't press right or somebody doesn't move right or pass right, you're in trouble. It's a complete reset for Manchester United. We are moments FC. We were a deep, like, not well, not, not necessarily deep, but we were a counter-attacking side that was well organised under Solskjaer and hit teams on the break. We relied on moments of individualism. We relied on moments. Ajax, Man City, halfway line, high press, high possession. Probe, probe, probe. Move, pass, move, pass, score. This is what it's all about. It's all about the team. Can these Man United players... I'm talking about the players from last season, come into this team this year, drop all their ego, drop all their anger, drop all their toxicity, and basically realise that that guy and that guy are my teammates, and I've got to trust them, and we've got to keep this ball, and we've got to move. And if, Or are we going to see people go, well, I'll, I'll try one pass where I'm going to shoot from 30 yards, I'm going to try and take somebody on. It's going to be really interesting. Uh, what who do you reckon we will manage to ship out says Chris got no idea spoke about this last night really difficult to see who we're going to sell Rashford to Chelsea and Chelsea goes to Europa League and he scores a last minute winner in the final we lose the cup like career mode says TXN hey career mode is going to be good today hopefully I'll win the league anyway look thanks everyone for watching another good show um, nice to get a couple of exclusives as I said um, uh, we'll see what happens in non-United news, watch out Arsenal. Miss, uh, they'll be going after uh, Lissandro. Really, really interested to see if they can break Ajax's resolve there. If they do, we're in trouble. Uh, if Arsenal get Lissandro Martinez, I'd, I'd say we're, we're going for Torres. Um, I can't see us getting Timber if, we, if they get Martinez. It's whether United can persuade Ajax not to do deals with Arsenal and wait for us. 
Uh, hi, Mark. Despite the lack of great news and all this waiting, I hope you and the fans have been keeping well, says Tristan. Very well. And of course, yeah, no no second midfielder for Man United. I don't know what your thoughts are about that. I think a lot of us feared it, and that is the case. We are not looking to bring a second midfielder in this summer. It will be De Jong, Anthony, centre-back, full-back, Eriksen. That will be our summer if it goes perfect. We might not get that many, but a second midfielder is not on the list for Manchester United this summer. Breaking news. It'll be on Sky in a couple of days. Thanks for watching. I'm joking. Thanks for watching. Uh, smash a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe. Back at 2 o'clock as always. 8 o'clock again tonight. Subscribe bottom right-hand corner. And if you want to become a member, uh, click the join button. It's in the chat. Take care, everyone. Stay safe. I'll speak to you all soon. Sean says, Mr. Pogmentary and Mr. Instagramming Lingard gone. Bad board gone. Ronaldo and Ten Hag controls it all. Do you think this benefits Rashford and all? If everybody falls into line and works hard, we'll be a better team. If people bring their ego and dislike from last season, there will be problems. I'm yet to be convinced that all those problems from last year are going to disappear. I can't see it, but let's wait and see. Speak to you in a bit. Thanks, everyone.